Congratulations for deciding to join In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. Coming to you from our studios as always, because our guest today is Chris Collinsworth. He's won 17 Emmys. 17? Got to change the name. Instead of an Emmy, it's a Collinsworth. I mean, incredible. Eight for his studio work, nine for his analysis in game. He knows his football. Obviously, he was a great player himself. Unbelievable wide receiver, six foot five inch frame that could run. He was a size speed ratio guy that was really, really hard to handle. Uh, and uh, we talked about the, the big matchup Bengals, Bills, Sunday night, Acor Stadium. Place will be rocking. Both excited about calling that football game. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be a lot of matchups that are going to be very interesting to watch. And uh, we talk about a lot of those matchups. We go up and down offensive, defensive matchups for, for both football teams. And nobody knows football better than Chris Collinsworth. Always fun catching up with him, talking with him. I think you're really going to enjoy what he has to say. Thanks for taking time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from our outstanding studios, provided by First Star Logistics. And man, did you make a good decision today? Because we have a stud. We have a superstar. We have the one, the only, the 17 Emmy winner himself, Chris Collinsworth, is in the house. CC, what's up, my man? Out of all the introductions I've ever had, the word stud has never been associated with me. That's that's a brand new one right there. Okay. That <laughs> you are <laughs> hold on a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this down, man. Hold on. <laughs> give me a second. You know what? The thing I love about you though, too, so many things, but man, 17 Emmys, eight in the studio, nine as a game analyst, versatility, excellence. I mean, you you honestly. Or I can't think of a more accomplished guy. I mean, anything that you've done, you've done at the highest level. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you, know better. you know better than that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> no, it, it, it is. It, it's really amazing. It really is. Plus, you're the, the uh, majority owner of Pro Football Focus. I mean, are you going to give – you should go to a university somewhere and lecture – a course for a doctorate in time management. Uh, I am the worst at that. The only one that I'm trying to do today is I'm trying to get to SeaWorld. So I've got, I've got my Holly wants to take our 15 month, 18 month, whatever she is now, granddaughter to SeaWorld. I've got calls with the offensive and defensive coordinators at 11, 15, 12, got our management meeting for PFF at noon. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I got about 15 minutes of SeaWorld I think I can do. <laughs> that is, that, that's, uh, that's amazing. That is really amazing. All right, so what do you think about this football game? An important football game coming up on, uh, on Sunday Night Football. Buffalo Bills at Cincinnati, Paycor Stadium, NBC, Chris Collinsworth at the microphone with Mike Tirico. What do you think? Um, it, it, it may be the best game on our schedule, uh, honestly, because it has so much to it. You know, not only do you have two of the best teams in football, two of the best quarterbacks, two of the best coaches, you got, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you've got the whole Damar Hamlin story that goes along with it. And, you know, you were there, you, you had your own emotions. I was watching on television. I used to work with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. Right. And I could hear in their voices what was going on. Right. You could understand. And I think that all of us as former players, as former coaches, as former parents of kids that played football, you know, it all struck us in a little different way. And, uh, it was overwhelming. I mean, you knew uh, for for me, it was seeing Josh Allen. You know, I, I think Josh Allen tipped yep. the hand uh, that something way beyond what we were used to seeing was happening on that field. 
Um, and in many ways, whether it's, you know, the University of UC Hospital and their response, whether it was the Buffalo Bills and this training staff that week after week, time after time, they went through a rehearsal of exactly what happened that night. Uh, and if they didn't nail it, if they didn't get it exactly right in a very limited period of time, uh, Demar Hamlin wouldn't be with us for this game. And, you know, to see a football player being administered CPR. Now, I never saw it. You probably saw it. Yeah, uh, I, I should reverse this and ask you, you know, what 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 could you see from the booth that, that lets you know something different was going on when that happened, when no. they started doing CPR, trying to resuscitate him? I'm like, no way. Oh, you could actually see it. Yeah. I, I I was like, you know, could see him go down into there and, and could, you know, could see him uh, actually, you know, working on his chest a little bit. And it's like, is he gone? I mean, what is going on? And that's exactly what it was. I mean, they, they brought him back to life. It is unbelievable. And it's amazing that this kid is playing football this year. It's just, it's just an amazing story. Did he have his shoulder pads still on? In other words, or did they just cut everything off at that point? Yeah, they they basically, you know, cut cut stuff off and uh it was I mean it was it was it was a, a crazy thing to see. And like you said, Josh Allen, um to see, you know, co uh, the coaches, the way they handled the whole thing, to see McDermott's emotion, to see the empathy that Zach Taylor showed, you know, and um, I, I think I think that Zach Taylor, he couldn't have handled from his side of things in any better. I mean, it was just incredible the way. The, there's no rehearsing that, like you said, it's something that how, how how do you prepare for something like that? Now the medical team, both teams brought their A game to play the game of football, and they were playing at a high level. Bengals were up seven nothing; they were playing really well, but the medical crew that as you said, goes through all of this rehearsal um, on, on everybody's responsibility. They brought their A plus game. I mean, they were unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, they 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 saved lives. There's no question. I, I I was proud of Cincinnati on a lot of fronts, not only medically what they did, and and we all know that what's it called a trauma one center, whatever you see uh, health center, and I mean the the number of emergencies that that hospital sees every single day and and they have the capability and thank god it was only 10 minutes away and the great doctors there and, and all that they did um but from the bengals fans uh perspective and the respect that they showed uh in, in the moment uh, even when the game was canceled i mean let's face it that was that was a, a negative let's just take it purely from a football standpoint the Bengals looked to be in good position to win that game. It yep. would have flip flopped a couple of things in the standings, and they likely would have been playing in Cincinnati in the playoff right. game and in Buffalo. You go up to Buffalo and you're thinking, oh boy, the, the Bills hit a perfect day and it's snowing and it's terrible, and this is to their advantage. And it's all because of, you know, the fact that they canceled the game. And I, never once did I hear people, um, whether it was inside the stadium afterwards, it was, it was such a classy um, proud of Cincinnati kind of day that they, everybody said, Hey, that's football. What happened with DeMar? The NFL handled it. However they handled it and didn't change anything. Didn't give the Bengals any benefit of the doubt. Didn't try and make it a neutral site. You know, there were all kinds of things that were going around there. Right. And for Zach and the Cincinnati Bengals and, and Mike and Katie, and I never heard one peep of this isn't fair. This isn't right. This is, it was just like that happened. This is football. Let's go on to, you know, whatever we have to do. And then they go up and even on the football field, handle their business in Buffalo. It was, it was a, a pretty amazing string of, of, first class Cincinnati moments. No doubt. No doubt. And DeMar Hamlin himself says, um, I heard him say that he's three hometowns where he was born and raised Buffalo and Cincinnati. That's, that's pretty strong. I mean, the way 
the way he was taken care of and the way people handled everything, you know, it, it, such a major impact, obviously, on he and his family. It's just, you're right. I mean, Cincinnati, uh, in, a, in a crisis moment, man, stepped up in so many ways and, and shined brightly. There's no question about that. Yeah, yeah it was cool. That was really it was. cool. It was. So, you know, here's here's uh, less a hard year. transition. Okay, let's do some football. Believe me, I, I we we do this all the time, and there's no right way to do it. So, oh, I know it's like so. Less than a year later, here here we come again, and, and I imagine the response that the city, the crowd is going to give Hamlin is going to be. I I hope. They let him come out to midfield or something. They do something specifically for him to just acknowledge the fans and the fans acknowledge him. Uh, I don't know if it's pregame, uh, before the game. I, I don't know. But, I mean, I think that the respect should be shown both ways. You know, I, I think that would be cool. I, I'd be surprised if there weren't something. Now, there's a chance that DeMar doesn't play in this game. I mean, right. he hasn't right. been active for a lot of games. Um, and you know, that, so certainly it's not, it, it won't be anything unusual if he's not activated for this right. game. Right. So just so people who are listening have some understanding of that. Um, but he may, you know, who knows? I mean, this may be one of those games that DeMar goes to the coach and goes, please, can I just play on specialty? I, I need to get this out of my system. I need to right. play again in that state. You know, I, I don't know what they're going to do. We, we've, uh, I'll, I'll talk to some of the coaches uh, later on this weekend, but um, yeah. And, and, but as far as just a pure football game, um, it's, it's pretty amazing too. And, and, you know, watching the tape back of, of uh, the, the last couple of games, these two teams have played uh, it was, it was stunning to see Joe Burrow play the other day, you know, oh. and it was, I mean, the, the fact that the guy could barely walk and made it through uh, to this point in the season and you just, you know, if there was ever a such thing as a perfect bye week, it seems like that that was the perfect bye week that led into San Francisco. Yep. The, the play that Burrow made, the, the scramble and escaping and spinning out and completing that pass, may have been the player play of the year here so far. I, I somebody, I, it wasn't me that put it together. Somebody sent me or, or didn't send me and put it out on social media, sort of a, a, a moment by moment breakdown of that, of that play. And I was like, I mean, you know, I watched it and I, but I didn't see all of that. Right. I mean, he yeah. literally was escaping two of the best pass rushers uh, in the NFL Stiff arming, you know, bows into the ground, spinning out a perfect pass into really tight coverage, uh, and he did it all day. He was he was as good, and we've seen him be great, but I thought he was as good as as I've ever seen him, and I think player of the week this week. So both of these quarterbacks, you talk Joe Burrow, talk about a guy, and and Joe was is I don't know if he's as underrated as he once was because. You know, he's done some Houdini things like you just referenced. I thought Alex Cap was big on that play, too, the way he helped peel Bosa off of him. He, he's like, man, get off my quarterback kind of thing. He made a hustle play there. Uh, and, and the offensive line, I thought, responded, you know, to Joe, the way he was playing. And I thought they elevated their their level of play. But both of these quarterbacks, and I mean, Allen, are you kidding me? The way he can hurt you with his feet and he's got that powerful throwing arm and Joe Burrow the same way. I mean, both of these quarterbacks, what a matchup at that position. It is. And, and uh, Josh is coming off of, uh, he had to sit out of practice yesterday with a yeah. shoulder thing. Uh, but to get back to one of your points just a minute ago, um, I, I, I thought Orlando Brown had, I mean, I don't know because I haven't studied all the games, but I studied this one and to watch him match up with Bosa was Stunning. I, I thought it got to the point where Brown was doing such a good job about halfway through the game. They flipped him over to Jonah Williams on the other side. Like they, he couldn't get through Orlando Brown. Yep. They flip him over uh, and Jonah Williams started doing a good job. Of him. And I know yep. Jonah was not happy about moving from left tackle to right tackle. That position fits him. 
it fits them better than left tackle. I don't know why, but I, I you know, and, and a lot of time they were sliding away from Orlando Brown and he was truly one-on-one -on, -one on Bosa. So yep. maybe Williams got a little bit of help uh, with some of that stuff, but I, I, it was, it was for me, cause there's a big gap between when I've studied the Bengals, you know, where I really like spent all week watching tapes and studying them. Uh, I, I just thought their offensive line had taken a big jump over what I had seen. And I'm assuming Orlando Brown and the changing of Williams over to the other side was a big part of it. Uh, but uh, it, it was it was significant and it's significant to the point where I think it gives this team a legitimate chance to win the Super Bowl if they're playing like that, you know, the rest of the way out. I agree. I thought that it was their their best game. Honestly, I thought that it was the most complete game the Bengals have played since the game you referenced, the playoff game in the snow in Buffalo. All three f phases in that game played complimentary football and the Bengals handled the Buffalo Bills handily and I thought this game in San Francisco that was probably since then the most complete game the team you know has played and both of those are on the road I, this this team here it is the month of November Chris and we know how important November football is over the last two Novembers going into this November but 21 and 22 they're five and one from November 21 on it, it, take away that uh, that Cleveland loss because they they rested the starters in six postseason games, the team is 18 and four in November, December, and January uh, from the from November of 2021. I mean, that's that's playing your best football at the most opportune time, and that's what you that's what you try to do is peak at the right time, right? Yeah, no doubt. And as you look at the team, and you start start trying to analyze, you know, what it is that. You know, what do they do well? What could hurt them? Obviously, Burrow, you can't lose Burrow. But you probably can't lose Joe Mixon at this point either. Mixon is, I, I mean, he was running like a bear the other day. He, he was. really was. I mean, he was dropping that shoulder. And and uh, when he ran over Greenlaw, like Greenlaw is one of the biggest hitters in this league. And he dropped his shoulder on him and basically left him hurting on the field afterwards. I, I was like, what was that? Um, you'd like to see a little bit more production maybe out of the tight end position than what they've gotten. Uh, they did a couple of things with Irv Smith where they kind of would fake like they were blocking him and then circle him back out of the backfield, like right over the center position. Uh, I, I, I thought they did such clever stuff. And I, I know it was like a step forward putting Joe Burrow under center, but some of the reverse stuff with Chase just to draw attention away and help the run game. Uh, a little bit. I, I thought Tyler Boyd's route on the on the fade route, where he really took his time to provide a little more space in the back of the end zone uh, for Joe Burrow to hit that that touchdown pass back there. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and even uh, Yossi, y y I'm still working on his name, Yosivish, Yosivash, Yosivash, uh, yeah. Yosivash. Yosivash. Is, you know that was a pretty play. So yeah. and, and but you probably without going to the play of the, of, you know, the linebackers and the secondary, um, th this is a team that's starting to get there. I didn't know, you know, give, give uh, Lou credit for the idea that he was asked to, you know, do it without Bates, do it without Bell, you know, kind of change over. They're so young on that back end of the secondary um, now. And, and, but it looks like that's coming together. Jordan Battle with a huge tackle uh, in the middle of the field. DJ Turner's having to make and play significant time with Chido Bay sort of in and out of that lineup. So this is this is a team that um, you know I, I I really do I feel pretty good about them. I, I feel pretty good about at least in comparison to anybody else in the league. They they got the quarterback. They have the receivers. They're at sort of that time before they have to start making really hard decisions about the salary cap. Uh, and, you know, what do you do with T Higgins? How does Tyler Boyd fit in? You know, what do you do with all that stuff? Um, but, but as far as this year, and it's what I thought we would see out of them this year, but that because of Burroughs injury, we really didn't see until last week. Absolutely. I mean, the first month of the season, he was stationary. I mean, it, it was, it was a tough dynamic and, the, the off season, all the tweaks and the different things the coaches had 
you know, added to the play. They had to just junk all of it until, you know, the last couple of weeks. And now they're introducing a lot of stuff that they wanted to introduce since Jump Street, but they hadn't had a chance to do it. So it's going to be interesting to see. The similarity, too, is you got two outstanding quarterbacks who each have a receiver that can carve it up, Chase and Diggs. And since the beginning of last year, they're both top five at this point, last season and, and to date this season in terms of receiving yards. So these guys can get it done. Um, and that was your forte. You were multiple, what, three or four Pro Bowls in your eight-year career. Um, you know, you, you, you knew what life was about in that regard. How do you – what do you think of, the, of those standout receivers? Yeah, you know, Gabe Davis is the other one, and there it's in, and because they're missing so many of their tight ends, you're seeing Gabe Davis having to play some of the tight end role. So some of the when they would bring two tight ends down, they'll bring Gabe Davis in there with Dalton Kincaid, who's also much more of a yeah. receiver. Yeah. You know, he's the first round pick. I I thought Kincaid on tape for getting ready for the draft looked as much like Travis Kelsey as anybody I had seen. He is not a big guy, but he knows how to read defenses. You would think he played quarterback at some day. He's, he really understands the zones and how to get open and how to position himself. Uh, and and uh, when Josh Allen talks about him, it's in glowing terms. It really is. And you can see it uh, on the tape as well. Um, the, the, then they had a couple of guys. So Kincaid broke out. But so did uh, Khalil Shakir, number 10, on the Buffalo Bills. So keep an eye on him. He was their leading receiver uh, a week ago, and he's sort of that punt return kind of guy. And then they've got another one, Deontay Hardy, um, who used to be Deontay Harris, I think, that, you know, the Saints, he changed out of respect for his stepfather. Uh, but, and then James Cook in the backfield. So they're, they're much younger. Uh, than what they've been. Uh, Gabe Davis fills multiple row, rows. He's a stud when you're in the room with him. You know, you you think you're you're interviewing a, a running back or something instead right. of, of a wide receiver type of guy. Uh, but they're legit. I mean, a good solid offensive line. They really improved up front, David. Where they, you know, they had Deion Dawkins and Spencer Brown on the outside, but they draft uh, Osiris Torrance, who was out of the University of Florida guard. Mitch yep. Morris, we know what he can do from the center. One of the most mobile guys. You'll see Mitch Morris on the move all the time and Deion Dawkins pulling all the time out in front. Dawkins mm -hmm. for a big tackle uh, can really move. But maybe the guy that helped them the most was Connor McGovern playing that left guard position. So they really solidified the two guard positions. And, you know, from a quarterback standpoint, being able to step up a little bit into that pocket and especially some of the run opportunities – It'll be, but it'll be interesting to see how much Josh Allen actually runs in this game because of that shoulder injury. You know, he he looked great running on Thursday night against the Bucks ten days ago or whatever it was. By the time we get to game time, uh, but but will he be willing to run again? Ah, it's a long season, you know what I mean. And then it's it's you got to have that guy. There's no way they're winning anything without him. I think you might see him pair back a little bit from running him, but I, I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't anticipate they've, they've in the past had the design calls, the quarterback draw, quarterback counter, quarterback sweep. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of those, you know, design run package uh, snaps called. I might be wrong on that, but I, it'd be hard to anticipate that to be the case. The thing though, I'm, I'm looking at, at Josh Allen and I'm thinking, Oh man, Purdy threw for 360. And almost rushed for another 60, 50, whatever. He had 410 yards, you know? And it's like Josh Allen, I mean, it, it had trouble with Purdy. Josh Allen's a bigger version, bigger, stronger version of that when healthy, but it's going to be uh, interesting, interesting to see how they uh, they try to contain and control him. Their defense has been beaten up. Um, they, they, they lost, you know, like a, a really good player at every level. Jones yeah. is out, who's a big, massive defensive lineman. You know, in the run game, Milano's out, and they they lost White, but they signed Doug. Uh, they traded for Douglas. What do you think there, Chris? How much how much time do you think Douglas will get? And do you think Leonard Fournette will be a factor in this football game? Or is it too early with those guys? I, I don't think either one of them. I I, I don't know for sure. I, I didn't. We haven't talked about that, but I'd be surprised. Uh, like 
I don't even know if they've had their physicals yet, you know, yeah. so um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tend to doubt that one until I actually see it. Yeah. Um, but it, it is, it is a, it, it's a good defense. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to get uh, Von Miller back up to speed. He's really not yet. Leonard Floyd has been their primary sack guy yeah. uh, on that side, but maybe, Maybe the the most important replacement you talked about Matt Milano that linebacker being out and this Terrell Bernard number forty three has stepped in along with Tyrell Dotson which I'm for sure going to screw that up in the game Terrell and Tyrell the two linebackers I had no chance on that one <laughs> but it, it, it's but the the key in this game when you face the Bengals receivers and what they're able to do are the cornerbacks so. Uh, they should be back healthy again. Dane Jackson's back. Christian Benford's at back, um, and and Taron Johnson, who's sort of the Mike Hilton of their team. You know that that slot guy, and then Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, the two guys that really are the brains of the operation back there uh, on the back end, piecing that whole thing together. And inside, uh, you have to talk about Ed Oliver a little bit. He's right. he seems to be having one of his best years. He, it'll be a great challenge. I'm sure Cordell Bolson will see a lot of them uh, in the game and, and that matchup. Uh, so we're going to have to win some one-on-ones inside with a really a smaller, quicker, I don't want to say Aaron Donald, but that style of play, you know, just a, a little, a little bit more quickness running back, almost playing that three technique over there. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a solid bunch. Um, the Bengals, if they play like they did against the 49ers, are going to be hard for anybody to beat. Kansas City Chiefs, you can name whoever you want. The Philadelphia Eagles, I don't care. Right. So can they, can they put together a string of those kinds of games or at least one more against a, a top opponent? But this win streak, especially, you know, they would go all the way through the NFC West now, but especially when Burrow was still not able to run, not able to move, to somehow eke out, you know, those games against the teams in the West was it was remarkable. And now you begin to see, I think, what we thought the Bengals might look like in that one game against San Francisco. I'm trying to get a petition out in the stadium for fans to sign to uh, to the commissioner to request a, tr- a, a a movement in the NFC West just for this year because we're swept <laughs> already. So you know, just move the division one season. And uh, and come back and play, you know, in in the AFC North after this. But yeah, swept that uh, NFC. Got to start stacking some AFC wins. Uh, there there are no two ways about that. It's a uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a great football game. The one thing that you know is incredible, and I, I know you've been to the stadium many times. I mean, Paycor has become a tough place to play. Everybody I talk to around the league, man, Paycor Stadium, that's rough, man. That was, that, that place is. You can't hear hear yourself think. That's unbelievable. That's a huge edge, man. Yeah, it, it is, and it's 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 a big day in Cincinnati when the yep. Bengals are playing, you know. And it wasn't always. You know, we can remember back, and I can remember it was it was almost like in '81 we stunned people. We're like, yeah. wait a minute, they're good, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. I, it felt like this year, even with the national media, it felt like there was a, this moment in time where they were like, oh, okay, the Bengals are back to being the Bengals again, you know, and they started off whatever it was, one and three. And and, and I'm like, oh, this team is really good. I they, You know, but they had to win a couple of those Seattle games, Rams games, you know, yep. so, some of those where it was was tough, man. I mean, you know, because they're playing with one arm tied behind their back or one calf tied behind their back, and yep. they found a way, you know. And I think is no matter if the Bengals win this division or not, if if they can battle their way through the North and the competition that they're going to face in that division week after week, somehow get into the playoffs. Who cares if they play on the road? We saw in Buffalo they can they can handle that, but just get in this playoff mix healthy. I think teams are going to have a, their hands full trying to beat them. I really do, and, and uh, we've we know they can play in Kansas City. We know they can play in Buffalo. We know they can play in Baltimore. 
you know, those are the, those are the teams you're, you know, Miami sitting out there, the, the, the AFC is loaded, yeah. loaded with talent. It and is. yet when you're looking around, you're going, is there anybody you like more than the Bengals? There are teams I like as much, but I can't say there's anybody after last week that I like more than what I saw from Cincinnati. Let's uh, let's get you out of here on this one, Chris, and, and can't thank you enough. I know you're, you're busy, man. You, uh, like a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. Uh, you're you're a b- busy guy, no question about that. And and for you to carve time means a lot, and I really do appreciate it. We all know, in any level of football, turnovers are a big deciding factor. The Bengals uh, got three turnovers, three takeaways against the 49ers in 15 minutes and 12 seconds. I mean, the first one was 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. They got another couple in the uh, fourth quarter. Josh Allen, eight interceptions amongst the most in the league. He's got four of them on third down. Luana Rumo, with all of his packages, his disguises, pre-snap look, post-snap look, totally different. How big a factor do you think that's going to be? Uh, always, you know, always yep. a factor. I, and it, it really has helped. It, it was sort of relieved for the Bengals that Hendrickson, uh, that injury to his foot or whatever, wasn't serious. He came back in. Yep. I, I don't know where he stands for this game. Did he have any sort of lingering uh, impact with that? And, you know, Hubbard. Uh, but what Josh Allen was talking about were these uh, these linebackers, Jermaine Pratt, some nice plays, a little bigger role in this defense and, and how they're playing it now. But his real praise was for Logan Wilson, who I think has some tie to his school or, or whatever the case may be, right? He was out in that. They played line. together at Wyoming, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's – that that's their their common bond. So he was building him up a, a little bit. But you, for me, it really came down to how much of a transition period would it be without Bates, who's playing great. Jesse Bates playing great in Atlanta. Von Bell, who was sort of the enforcer, coming down there. And they, I guess, now the Bengals are playing sort of that Nick Scott, Jordan Battle. You know, playing both of those guys in there. We even saw. Um, you know, some, some different Mike Hilton back some and playing some safety stuff. So it it's, it, I don't think it's there yet. And, and Lou's defense is so complex. You know, he expects that's the reason rookies just don't get on the field. You know, it's like every detail matters. And if a rookie screws up one thing and it's a touchdown. And so the, the fact that these guys are being force fed in here and, you know, made mistakes early and are having to learn on the fly and all that stuff bodes well for me for the end of the season and, and potentially the kind of turnovers uh, that you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the safeties, Poyer and Hyde. You know, if the Bengals safeties can play as well as those two or even better, the big matchup last week was, you know, Werner and, and Greenlaw. It, those two linebacks, man, that's a duo. Well, Wilson and Pratt. Pretty damn good. They each get an interception. They impacted the game, you know, more than the 49ers two linebackers did. They're great. I mean, both tandems are outstanding. Will the Bengals safeties be able to impact the game like the Buffalo Bills expect their safeties to? That's going to be an interesting one to watch as well. But a lot of stuff to think about for this one as always, right? That's the NFL, man. It's it's exciting. It really is. And and Kind of the fun thing is, I think Philadelphia with one loss now, but you know, almost everybody else is some somewhere in the pack right there, right? You know, it's like I don't know if you you like horse racing, but it's like one of those races on the turf when the, nobody runs very hard till they hit the home stretch, and then they all start sprinting down the home stretch, you know. And so I think that's what this year is going to feel like. It's going to be, you know, how do we, how do you position yourself? Uh, to make that stretch run healthy, uh, and as of today, you would you would feel pretty good about where the Bengals sit. Um, but you know, you turn around and get beat by the Buffalo Bills at home, and all of a sudden it's like, ah, eh, that, that wasn't. <laughs> but if you knock off, I mean, you just start the string of playing these tough teams, tough and and playing them well. I think you're going to see all those power rankings and all that. You knock off the Bills here. You knock off the 49ers the week before. 
all of a sudden the Bengals start wearing, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is, this is the bunch. This is the team that could do it. Well, Chris, once again, can't thank you enough. Appreciate your time. You're a credit to the Cincinnati Bengals organization as an alum. You're a credit to the city of Cincinnati. And uh, you do as good a job as could possibly be done. Enjoy catching games when you're analyzing it. It's uh, it's football lessons learned, man. You're, you're, you're unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And appreciate your enthusiasm. One of these days when I retire, I'm going to come back and sit in the booth with you and yell who day all day and have a, have a great time. I, I had a lady one time I was, I was at a doctor's appointment and I came in and this lady was clearly upset with me. She didn't, she wasn't happy at all. I'm like, it's like, what's wrong? You know, I thought I'd filled out my paperwork wrong or something. And she goes, I, I listened to you call Bengals games and you haven't yelled who day one time after a touchdown. And I was like, I know, <laughs> I know, I, I just can't. <laughs> and, uh, but one day, one day I will be able to do that. As always, you're the best. Thank you, sir. Good talking to you, Dave. Same here, CC. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.